so excited to be here today and be a part of all these conversations with you, uh, with you all. I, really, my job at Chartbeat is to build products for, for everybody in this room. Um, so this is an awesome experience. Um, Chartbeat, if you don't know, is a web analytics service founded on real time. Um, so we help publishers like all of you know when and what to act on to nurture and grow your audience. Um, and as Amy said earlier, uh, during the, the discussion about PBS, um, it's, it's one of our jobs uh, specifically as, as product builders to make sure it's not too complicated. So we're pulling all insights out. So where are we, go, uh, where are we really going based on what we're hearing from the, uh, from the industry? So in the early days of Chartbeat, we wanted to understand not only what drove traffic, um, but really what, all, what makes someone consume your content, like your content, and decide to return, most importantly. So we introduced engage time in order to understand, uh, understand the visitor's behavior, measuring where people were spending their time specifically on your site. Now focusing on uh, aligning the right business goals with editorial goals, we can really help you build that loyal returning audience. So just a few years ago, we were focused as a company really getting data in the hands of all folks like you. And that's happened. That's awesome. Of course, you're all using it now. And you've always had this fundamental understanding that, that page views don't necessarily matter as much as time, but it's been hard to, to capitalize on that. Of course, being a data science focused company, you know, we, we didn't come to this conclusion lightly. We didn't just throw this out. Um, so doing a bunch of studies, we found that users who experience more than a minute of engaged time on a story are actually 50% more likely to return tomorrow. In fact, visitors who returned spent 40% more engaged time on their first visit than those who came only once. And it really, as part of this, an interesting thing is we discovered this is occurring 66%, excuse me, of that engagement is occurring below the fold. So developing your quality audience and aligning the big long-term goals you have with daily actions is what we're doing and how we're presenting that shift that you're seeing occur. And we also realize this is a long game. This is not a short-term thing. So with all the newsroom responsibilities and structures that have changed over the years, we wanted to make sure that we're aligning with your goals and the industry goals. This all sounds awesome, throwing out a lot of things here, but what I really wanted to do today is give you some examples that we've learned from our 5,000 plus customers representing 80% of the top publishers in over 37 countries. So newsroom teams are really now marketers, they're product managers, they're um, analysts. Uh, these roles have broadened so much that uh, the different tools that we put in front of these teams have to cross all of these boundaries to help you do very different jobs than before. You've heard a lot today already about creating this environment of data. Um, and behind me, uh, fortunately, Joy and team from the Missouri Columbian allowed us to, uh, to share uh, their data. So behind me is one of the best examples of, um, of an environment of data, and this is a big board. This spawned out of uh, a hackathon project that we had internally um, and turned into really one of the simplest ways to begin exposing your teams to data inside a newsroom by putting this up on a, uh, on a screen around the office. Again, keeping it simple, two numbers here. There's the number of active visitors that are on each particular page and the amount of average engaged time that is occurring on those stories. So just one simple example of how you can, how you can bring users into that uh, environment of data. So one step deeper, we spend a lot of time talking about optimization versus adaptation with our customers. You can't adapt unless you really know what you're adapting to in real time. So this is our mixing of these different worlds. So specifically, how do you use these tools? How do you use uh, the environment of data that we create, the dashboards that we have, the 
overlay product that gives you insights into uh, how your content is per performing specific to the home page. Or when you get a push notification on your phone via the Chartbeat app, it says, hey, a story is spiking, um, you know, represented by a, by a green chevron in the big board. One of the examples that, that we like to, to uh, use is when do you know you should capitalize on a social channel? Um, you can do this in a number of different ways. You can look via the Chartbeat dashboard and, and see the top performing content by visitors, um, understand what content is, is highly engaged, and go out to those different social platforms. We heard a number tossed out today. Um, and actually engage with your audience. Um, but there's, you, you don't have time to do that with every story. So uh, searching by the refers for those different social platforms gives you some insight into um, what's trending now. Um, and then the other, uh, the flip side to that is what type of content is, are your users heavily engaging in on your site that then you should push out to social platforms and begin interacting with? The other interesting thing is, is to pay attention to um, content that uh, is, is resurfacing, is beginning to trend back up for your site that you can figure out how to promote uh, external to, to the site. Another example is, is around understanding uh, how you should be promoting within your most, valuable, um, your most valuable locations on your site, so on those section fronts, on those home pages. One of the interesting things we, we found um, in, uh, in, in a product that we have that actually looks at daily and weekly views of your content is, for example, users who come to your site and look at the sports section really only look at the sports section. Users that come to your site and look at the business section also look at the sports section. So you can use these, these different insights to decide how you program those uh, those landing pages specifically, or the content um, that's targeted at those sections and those uh, audiences. You can also simply look at top pages and, and determine which of the top pages uh, where there's the most number of visitors aren't on those landing pages. Uh, are you missing an opportunity to capitalize uh, on your, your highest traffic content in real time, or the content that has the most engaging audience? On the other side of that, again, coming back to the, newsroom, uh, the newsroom's job as a product manager, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of customers now using our APIs, um, using the data that drives an interface like this to actually have modules across their site automatically showing uh, top content in these different sections by social referrers or purely by engaged time or by the number of people um, on, uh, on the particular pieces of content. Um, so it's a really interesting mix of, uh, of opportunity there as well. Again, this is all about the long game, though. I started off by saying this. So building, uh, building an audience loyalty is really the only way to create a thriving, long-term digital business, which is the job of, of everybody in this room. We've all seen that ad CPMs are dropping, but we know that time matters. We've started to see this shift already uh, in all types of advertising, um, as we have a number of studies that go back to the, the early days of TV that, that really prove that. But by focusing on engaged time now, you're, you're moving that needle for the advertising community as you start to have very different conversations with them. We also know a returning audience is worth more. They're going to consume more content. They're going to stay for longer periods of time. And that ultimately will, will help you drive more revenue. So what creates loyalty, uh, this, this loyalty concept that I'm talking about, and how do you focus on it? Ultimately, it's, it's what you all uh, were trained, some of you here, um, to do. It's create great content that is lined, aligned with your audience's goals and expectations. And what we're trying to do is present present what your audience is consuming most effectively in real time so you know what's working. Digital video is a great example of, of the evolution in, in loyalty. It's very easy to understand the concept of if someone watches an entire video, that's clearly something they're voting on 
their, their attention is drawn to that video, they're suggesting that that is a quality piece of content. It is a topic that they're interested in. So this is helping us kind of reshape how we think about the, the presentation of content. It's really important to figure out how the news uh, affects your audience through data. So again, all these different tools can kind of come together to help you understand where your most valuable audience is and how to capitalize them. Uh, another example is, is if focusing on this locale, focusing on um, the, the area that you think is most important for you. Um, and we have a, a number of customers who have, have found that they thought their market was uh, very small, very local. Um, in one example, it was a faith-based uh, faith, faith uh, publication, digital publication, and discovered uh, that at certain periods of the day, they had a large influx of traffic coming from outside their locales. So they began to reprogram their site in real time during those periods for the kind of external audience outside of their, of, of their normal uh, news cycle, outside of their normal uh, ranges. So it's, in that example, they're growing their loyal returning audience beyond what they thought was, um, was a, a saturated market by, by them specifically. So establishing a unique viewpoint, uh, making sure your authors uh, are aligned with your content, um, this all is, uh, is, are contributing factors to, um, to building that loyal audience. Much of what we're talking about here is really simply returning to the roots of quality, quality content creation. Um, and we're trying to help you uh, visualize what quality means for your audience. So with this aligning of editorial and business goals in, in the newsroom, um, there's also a shift in how the newsroom needs to operate, how the, how the newsroom is laid out, how, what roles exist. Um, one of the best examples I, I have of this uh, is from my time at ESPN, where there was this notion of creating different teams to focus specifically on, um, on the different areas uh, that were uh, were needed to drive a newsroom. So having a social team, having a video team, having a mobile team versus a front page team. Um, and much like all of you, um, they came to the realization that, that the best way to do this was to have everyone operate as one, to create this notion of one newsroom. Um, so it makes it even uh, an even heavier job for us to create experiences that uh, allow you to see how the, your content is doing depending on what your role is, not specifically for the next year, but what your role is for the next two minutes. Um, so part of what we're doing is, is, is surfacing, surfacing these insights specific to the role that you suggest you want to be in. So now I'd like to welcome Joy, who's a, a great example of, of how analytics, um, and specifically Chartbeat, is, is changing her newsroom from right around the corner. <laughs> 